In this video, I'm going to introduce complementizer phrases. So complementizer phrases are phrases that usually start with the words that, if, or whether. Uh, for instance, in the first sentence, I said that John is great. Okay, so that John is great is a complementizer phrase headed by the complementizer that. This is not the same that that we see in determiners. So this introduces another clause. So the embedded clause, John is great. Okay, and we can think of this as just another tense phrase or another sentence within our sentence. So I said that John is great. Well, John is great is a sentence on its own, but I said that John is great. So again, this is just a TP inside of a CP, which is inside of a bigger TP. In fact, this verb said takes a complement and it always takes CP complements. So I said that something. I said something. And even if we say I said something, that's still going to be a tense phrase, but we'll have a complementizer phrase with an empty head. Okay, so we'll see an example of that in a little bit. Uh, the second example I want to show you is a relative clause. So the man that eats pudding is full. Okay, so once again, that eats pudding is a complementizer phrase that is modifying the head noun man. And within it, we see eats pudding as another tense phrase. Uh, there's no subject in this. There is some movement going on, which we'll cover later in the lecture series. Um, but eats pudding, we can consider that to be as part of a tense phrase. Okay, so once again, the man is full is a tense phrase on its own. But within that tense phrase, the man is full, we have another complementizer phrase that has a tense phrase within it. Okay, so let's draw one of these just to illustrate. I said that John is great. Okay, so we can start at the top with the TP and I will abbreviate the DPs from now on. So I uh, said, okay, so uh, this is the head of a verb phrase and it takes a CP complement. So sister to a V and daughter to a V bar. Okay, and then we have C which is our complementizer, that. So that is the head of the complementizer. And all CPs will take TPs as their complements. Okay, and then we just have the same structure that we have at the top. So again, we just have another DP, we have a VP within it, um, V bar, V, and then great is an adjective phrase. So that, John is our DP, our verb is is, and then adjective phrase, great. I said that John is great. So we have a TP, John is great. Within a bigger TP, I said that John is great. We also have the fact that said takes a CP complement, which is this whole thing that John is great. Okay, so what are other verbs that take CP complements? Well, there's verbs like no, or believe. So I know that John is great. I believe that John is great. Um, I said that John is great. I inform is another one. So I informed something that something. So this is a diatransitive verb. It takes a DP complement and a CP complement. Similar with the verb persuaded. So takes a DP complement and then a CP complement, like I persuaded the students that my exam would be easy. And there are other verbs that we'll encounter as we go along. Okay, so we can really revise all of our sentences now, since aren't tense phrases within complement phrases really just complement phrases anyway? So if complement phrases are the head of these embedded clauses, then shouldn't complement phrases also just be an entire clause? So we introduce CPs as being part of all of our sentences. So in the sentence, John ate spaghetti, we have a TP, a DP, and a VP. So this part is normal, but we also introduce the empty complementizer. So this right here, 
let's really focus on on this. So there's a C here, and it has minus Q. So this means it is not a question, or in other words, we could say this is like the declarative sentence marker. So with declarative sentences, we'll have a minus Q here. We also don't have anything in it. So we could leave it blank, or we could write the null symbol to mean that it's empty. And in this case, we're saying, look, there's no complementizer there. It's just an empty complementizer. So the question is, well, why do we do this? Well, when we have questions and we want to form questions, we'll need a complementizer in all of our sentences anyway. So we might as well include it for declarative statements as well. And also, it's not always the case that we actually have an overt complementizer there. We don't always have the word that in C. So here's another example. Joan thought I died. So we can say Joan thought that I died, but we don't need the that there. So how do we take care of that sentence? Well, let's draw it. So we have a subject of a sentence, which is Joan. And then Joan thought something. So Joan thought I died. So what's really going on here? It takes so thought takes CPs as a complement. So it does take a CP. So we have the same structure, but there's just nothing there under C. It is empty. And I died is a declarative statement. So we have Joan thought I died. And we just continue along as normal. So I is a determiner phrase. VP, V bar, V died. So as we can see, if we want to say Joan thought that I died, then we just replace the empty C with that. Okay, so this structure allows us to do both. The empty complementizer as well as the non-empty complementizer. And you might be saying, hold on a second, in the previous slide you just said, wait, all sentences start with CPs, right? So yes, they all start with CPs. If I was a good person and was sticking to everything I said, then I should have started the sentence like this. So I should have had an empty complementizer at the front, as well as a minus Q, and taking the TP as a complement. So this is the correct structure for this sentence. Now, sometimes we get lazy, and usually bad things happen when we get lazy, but the lazy way is that when dealing with sentences that don't have questions or don't have movement or don't make use of the CP, we just kind of leave it off at the beginning of our sentence. And this is something I will be doing in future videos, but I will include the CP when we need it. When we don't need it, I'll get rid of it for the sake of space and to make things look nicer. Um, but generally, when you do draw your own trees, you always want to include the CP information on the main clause as well. Okay, so that's it for complementizer phrases. Next time we'll go into tense phrases a little bit more. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them the best that I can.